Hey guys, what is going on? It's Jay Campbell. Um, I don't know. I have so many different things I'm involved in with now. I guess I could say from TRT Revolution and of course the TRT Manual book. So well, let me get the delay there. And of course I'm joined by my good friend, Nelson Virgil. Nelson, how are you, brother? I'm doing good, Jay. Nice to awesome. see you again, man. It's been a while. It has been a while. We are both very, very busy in our lives, which is a great thing. But, uh, you know, for the guys that are going to be watching here today, let me make sure we are recording right now, correct? It's recording. Okay, we're good. Um, for the guys that are here today, Nelson has compiled some amazing data on metformin. And I think everybody who's going to be watching this now, and then also for the folks that are watching this on the recording, um, knows that this is a really hot topic in, you know, not only the fitness um, in the performance communities, but really around the world for optimization, fat loss, health, whatnot. So this is some amazing information he's compiled, and I'm going to go ahead and share the slide deck. Did you want to say anything before I start the slide deck? Yeah, yes. well, well, thanks a lot for having me. Um, of course. I, I have my own biases uh, on metformin. Um, I know you've been a really big advocate for uh, the drug itself and more research in the drug because we do need more research. Um, and I started using it six months ago. Uh, um, everybody knows I'm HIV positive, and I've had some – um, not only gut-related issues, IBS, but also in HIV, we have something called uh, HIV lipodystrophy, which is caused not only by the infection itself, but also by the medications. And HIV lipodystrophy is basically the accumulation of visceral or mm -hmm. deep, deep belly fat. And we have some good data from the past that showed that metformin can help decrease visceral fat and uh, so, so I started using like six months ago just to, um, even though my blood sugar is fine, uh, and started really noticing better gut function. I'm, I'm not as bloated as I used to be. Actually, I'm not bloated at all. I used to get bloated very easily. And um, I really think I've lost maybe half an inch of my waist uh, without doing much more than just working out and eating the same. So right, say, that, say that again. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know, I um, obviously started doing more and more research, and obviously I've been hearing you say a lot about metformin for a few months, since, or a year or two. So um, I got into all the papers, read everything I could, and put together this uh, slideshow, and hopefully you guys will enjoy it. It's a little long, so I apologize. No, so Nelson's slide deck is amazing. I'm going to go ahead and start sharing it right now, but um, we'll try to save some time for the folks that are watching this. Um, to answer questions at the end. So again, if you guys do have questions, you can you can obviously type them in the interface, but as Nelson and I know, and hopefully some of you guys have watched these before, it's a very not, it's not a clean interface. The syncing between Zoom and Facebook is not clean. So if you do type a question in there and we don't see it, just type it again and we'll get to it, okay? Um, okay, here we go. I'm gonna share the screen. And I'm going to go really fast, too, because there's a lot of data. And um, so if you have a question, you may want to hold off, because maybe I'll answer it uh, in the upcoming uh, slides there, because I think there are like 26 slides. Okay. So you, you can just roll down. Um, sure. So anyways, um, I, as you could see there, there's a logo, Clinic Optimizers. That's my new company um, that basically focuses on training physicians, mostly um, on compounded uh, medications. Medications are sold by compounding pharmacies. Many physicians don't know really uh, what these medications are and how to prescribe them. So that's that's my goal. So let's grow. This is just a waiver. This information is not to be used for medical, for your own medical uh, use. Uh, you need to discuss everything you see in this live uh, show with your doctor because um, I'm not here to recommend anything. I'm not a clinician. <laughs> we just play <laughs> internet doctors, Nelson. You know how that well, works. Well, you know, we are the people that translate and digest information. Right. Um, unfortunately, doctors, researchers, either obviously don't have time to do so. And so we are the ones, the, the geeks, I guess, that read stuff, read papers, and try to digest it down. At least that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, so we're not playing doctors. We really are like the, the advocates, the educational right. research advocates. So that's how I see myself. But anyways, before I start talking about reforming, I want to say that um, it may sound like a great drug. So, but keep in mind that all the data I'm going to be showing is based on, on people with type 2 diabetes. Right. Uh, the data has not really, it's not, there are hardly any data or no data on healthy younger people. 
Right. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, and, but we'll have eventually some more data, I hope, because it's getting, it's getting to a point that this very old drug is, is getting a lot of attention. There's a long-term study I'm going to talk about uh, funded by foundations and, and different groups uh, that is called TAME uh, that is actually really going to start enrolling older people without diabetes. These are older folks that don't have diabetes. So that's a good, that's going to be a great thing. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. The doses used in all these studies range from 1,000 milligrams to 3,000 milligrams per day. Um, so they're a little bit all over the place, but what we have seen, I've actually seen in reading all, all the references, is that doses over 1,700 milligrams per day have no additional benefit when it comes to glucose uh, control. Okay, so let's scroll down. Sure. And the interesting thing about this uh, drug is really it all started uh, with, um, in the, you know, Back in, you know, I forget what year it was, but it was rolled down again. Yep. It's Galena Officialis. Galena Officialis is uh, also called French lilac. In the Middle Ages, they started using it in Europe and China, the extract of the plant, to, um, to give it to people that are complaining about too much uh, urination. There, too frequent urination. Obviously, back then we didn't know where that diagnosis of diabetes was, <laughs> but um, it worked for that. People that and people with diabetes tend to urinate a lot, okay, when you have high blood sugar. So, do, uh, in the 1800s, the chem chemists actually isolated the active ingredient of, of this uh, plant, um, and uh, but it proved to be toxic. Then, uh, as years went by, um, researchers started. Um, uh, synthesizing uh, the molecules uh, in the lab and got to a less toxic uh, form, right? In 1950s, in the 1950s, a French doctor named uh, uh, John Stern called metformin glucophage, or what, you know, what translates into glucose eater. Right. Uh, it was approved a long time ago, in 1958, actually one year older than I am. I'm 58, it's 59 <laughs> years ago, uh, in the UK and France, and the US took forever. The US didn't trust the data, wanted more data. No. Uh, yeah, so actually 1994, it got approved. So it is an old drug. It is a generic, very cheap um, yeah. drug. Uh, in 1998, there was a largest study done in, U in the UK with people with uh, diabetes that actually showed that complicated and actually mortality was decreased by, by 32%. So that, that was an amazing data. Let's roll down. Sure. And I'm not going to go through all these graphs. I'm just going to say that this is the biggest, the first biggest study uh, done with uh, people with diabetes that actually showed, as you can see in the two uh, and the graphs on the top, that metformin decreased uh, death by any cause or myocardial infection or heart attacks. And you see in the two bottom ones, the hazard, hazard ratio, which is under one, which means it helped a lot of these people. These are people that obviously had high blood sugar, they were treated with metformin, and actually there was a, a, a difference in, in survival and cardiovascular disease. Let's keep rolling. So um, the, the benefits, uh, this is probably one of the most studied drugs in history. Right. Uh, it really is. It's uh, when you Google metformin, um, I mean, you would have pages and pages of different papers, not only in humans, but in animals too. And it, as I said, it's a very cheap drug. It's taken orally twice a day because the half-life is such that you shouldn't take it once a day. Um, and it, it, it dilates vessels. It improves uh, endothelial function, which is really the inflammation of, of uh, blood vessels. It, it is, it's got an antioxidative or antioxidant effect um, it obviously decreases insulin, decreases blood sugar, but it doesn't decrease blood sugar to the hypoglycemic level, right. which is some of the fears that people have, oh, you know, I have normal blood sugar, it's going to make me hypoglycemic. It doesn't do that. Um, it has been shown to, uh, some good data on colon and prostate cancer. I'll be showing that in, in a few slides. And also in uh, decreasing lipids, uh, LDL cholesterol. Keep going down. It's another one of uh, another slide that actually shows the uh, different studies that have been done um, on prevention and treatment of blood sugar control, uh, lipid lowering benefits, uh, either weight neutral or reduction. Most studies show that metformin decreases weight. 
uh, that may be linked to the fact that it decreases insulin, increases the way the body uses glucose or sugar for energy. Um, it actually improves the way the liver metabolizes sugars. And, and even eating the same amount of uh, calories, um, actually it shows that metabolism of glucose is improved. So maybe that's a reason, one of the reasons why people are losing weight. Did you, did you lose weight? Like you I, didn't, I, I lost, I lost, yeah. I used to, you know, I'm a short guy, mostly guy. And I was running at 196, seven, and I, I'm now at 190 and I cannot gain weight. I mean, if I take metformin, it's, it's very hard for me to gain weight. That's, right. that's, is it, but has it, it reduced your appetite though too? Have you noticed an appetite reduction at all? That, okay, okay, that's a good point uh, because there are some studies actually show that. To be honest, if you know, no, I probably don't have the cravings right. for <laughs> sweets and I do love sweets, um, but no, I'm, I'm eating more or less the same. I don't feel like, um, obviously, you know, this is something else I want to tell the audience is that we are not normal subjects. Right, right, <laughs> the right. Studies were done in people that were overweight with diabetes, high blood sugar. Most of us are working out. We are leaner than in the studies, younger than in the studies. I do take a lot of medications beyond this. And, and I'm going to show you guys at the end that there are actually some, some interactions. But no, I'm eating the same and right. uh, eating the same kind of foods. And I can, you know, it's, a, it's probably a good thing that, that I'm, I feel less bloated and leaner um, mm. I'm, I'm not a bodybuilder, so I don't know whether bodybuilders are trying to bulk up, will feel happy about, uh, metformin making it more difficult for them to gain weight. I have no idea I mean, because right. it works for me, but you know what I mean? The expectations are different. Anyways, uh, let's move on. Cardiovascular are you taking, protein. are you just to keep stay there though for a second? Are you taking 500 AMPM or are you taking a yeah, 500, 500, 500, 500 twice, uh, twice a day, uh, with food. Right. Okay. Let's not move on too, too quickly on, on this one because this is actually really fun. A this fun is the fight. science right here, yeah. But, but it's fun. It's actually not really complicated. It looks complicated, but it's not. I mean, we go, these are research uh, studies, and this has been going on forever. Like I said, I'm 58. The drug uh, was approved in Europe uh, one year before I was born. Um, but, you know, in, in worms, in fruit flies, in rats, or mice, obviously, and in humans. And what they have found, obviously, is that the, in all the animals studied, uh, lifespan has improved. Uh, right. They live longer. All cause, and, yeah. and the glucose, to the glucose uh, tolerance, the way the, the body uh, metabolizes sugar. But what they have found too, which is very interesting, almost in every single animal, including humans, is that our microbiota or microbiome, the, the, my, our gut bacteria, tends to change also with right. metabolism. It, clean, it cleans it up. It yeah, cleans it up. I'm friendlier, uh, uh, more like the gut uh, bacteria composition of a leaner person. Right, right. So that was really, I have to say, that's actually pretty amazing. They haven't really explained why that happened. I tried to go into every single paper, but it is absorbed by the gut and it actually, it is held uh, also obviously in the blood and liver and all that, but the gut holds up a lot of... Uh, uh, metformin, it seems to stabilize the right. lumen, which is the, the barrier that separates our blood from the sewer, and that right. is our gut, right? right. So anyway, so this is very interesting. This actually is pretty amazing. Maybe this is why um, I don't feel bloated when, you know, I have well, no idea. Well, let, let, me, let me jump in because we've found with some of our clients, I mean, so first of all, I obviously 100% agree with you, and this is a fascinating slide, but uh, we found with some clients that the biome if your biome is infected, meaning you're eating a diet of, you know, sugar, you know, whatever, high saturated fat, you know, engineered stuff, and you start getting either really bad flatulence or like you said, you just feel bad. Like some people just have nauseous feelings in the gut. That's what met, metformin is actually working to neutralize you know, whatever's growing down there, which could be candida. I mean, obviously there's many different forms yeah. of stuff, um, but it takes, it normally takes for someone that has a massively infected gut biome up to 10 days before that feeling goes away. And then boom, you know, you, you get the effects of metformin. So a lot of people will quit before they get the, you know, the beneficial effects of metformin because their stomach is so infected. So you definitely have to stay on it and maybe also look at an extended release version of the, um, of the, of the, of the supplement or I mean, of, yeah. of the medication as well. 
Yeah, I used to have, um, like I said, IBS symptoms. I would go to a bathroom more than normal people do. And ever since I started metforming, I only go to a bathroom maximum once or twice a day. And That's awesome. so in some studies, actually have shown that people uh, could have a little bit of uh, loose stools. And that's not been my case. It's been the opposite. So um, all those fears about diarrhea or GI issues are not really substantiated when, especially when we're looking at healthier people. So anyways, let's roll down okay. um, as if we can. Um, yeah, there we go. So this is a summary of uh, all the studies um, done to date with, uh, with diabetes. Diabetes, the, the effect on, 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 on diabetes itself, the, the complications of diabetes decreased by 40%, um, heart disease by 25 to 35%, cancer, um, 30% mortality actually improves even by 30%, so, or, or survival. And uh, there are some studies on the, the benefits of metformin on cognition, but they have not, they definitely the data is all over the place. Um, yeah. And as I said, uh, we have little to no data on people with uh, no diabetes. Uh, so let's scroll down some more. This is, a, and I, I'm going to go through this carefully and probably fast. I don't want to bore or give you a headache. It's actually, I'm a chemical engineer, but I tell you, it's been, it's been a long time since I graduated. AMPK, AMPK, AMPK. Yeah, biochemistry and all that stuff. So really quickly, just to, and when you, by the way, I'm going to teach one, uh, you guys to read this stuff, just looking at the arrows. There's some arrows, right, with a pointy little arrow thing. That means activation. And there's some lines that are supposed to be arrows, but they're not arrows. They have a little line that is crossing them. Yep. That's inhibition, okay? So metformin inhibits certain things and it activates certain things, okay? So it, it, it inhibits actually, um, and these are receptors, like uh, inflammatory related infect, uh, receptors, uh, uh, tumor necrosis alpha, IL-6, it actually inhibits a production of insulin. It, it, it may even work to decrease visceral fat in some, in some cases. It actually inhibits the uh, IGF-1 receptor. So that's, that's something we'll talk about later because that probably is where um, some guys that are really into bodybuilding get right. concerned. And it, it activates uh, the deponectin uh, receptor, which is a fat uh, a protein that fat cells produce to, to modulate um, uh, uh, free fatty acid metabolism, meaning you know, it, it's a way for the body to regulate how much fat gets stored or released. Right. Okay. So I'm not gonna go too much into the intracellular, what's happening inside the cell, but it really activates something we call AMPK, adenosine monophosphate activated protein kinase. That's a handful, mouthful. And that um, uh, protein actually is, is involved in the metabolism of lipids and glucose. And, and when you activate that, that um, protein, that's, it's good. I mean, lipids are lower and glucose yeah. goes down, yeah. but that uh, increase in um, AMPK actually inhibits something called mTOR, mammalian yeah. target of rapamycin, which is mTOR is involved in the creation of protein tissues. So that's another concern people have. Well, if you are inhibiting mTOR, which is uh, what, call, what, what creates organs, muscle, uh, even you know, activation of mTOR may actually increase cancer cancer risk. But inhibiting it and not inhibiting it, but slowing it down, will that be a bad thing? Actually, the what many anti aging studies in animals have shown that slowing down mTOR actually improves survival in right. animals. So, so that's that's an interesting thing. And at the bottom, you can say you can see on the red little boxes there. Uh, uh, the effect on inflammation is improved, uh, cellular survival, uh, protein synthesis is, is affected, but the lifestyle, the lifespan and longevity, at least in animals and people with diabetes is increased. So it is complex, you know, as you can tell, you can go on forever and give you a really big headache, but. Well, well let's stay here one second though, Nelson, because this is a big question, you know, in the, in the performance community, they all talk about the, in, the mTOR inhibition. And I actually was in a conversation today with um, Carl Lenore and Sean Wells, and of course, Jim Brown, my business partner. And the latest data, according to Sean, and he's read a lot of research recently, he doesn't believe that a person who is optimized, obviously someone who's on TRT or is hormonally optimized, has, has the, the, the mTOR inhibition is not 
significant enough to actually prevent, um, you know, in the, in the, in the biochemical statements, uh, you know, the phosphokinase creatine, which will, you know, lead to cellular um, increases as far as mass. So, so he doesn't believe that a person who is optimized has any risk. And he also believes um, that even a person who's not on testosterone or is not optimized, um, it's very inconsequential, especially to, in comparison to what you just said today. If you look at those red boxes of all these amazing things it's doing cellularly, um, that it's not the, the, the risk of losing muscle mass is less than the reward of all the other beneficial functions of taking metformin for the, you know, these great things we're talking about. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 And mTOR uh, exercising activates mTOR by the right. way. Right. So, uh, you know, we're also doing all the things like testosterone and I'm going to show data on testosterone yes, and metformin, right. growth hormone and metformin, et cetera, et cetera, which, you know, we kind of counterbalance some of the mTOR and mTOR, as I said, inhibition of mTOR actually has been shown to increase yes. longevity. Longevity. So, but at the same time, I <laughs> I want to live a longer life, but I don't. I also want to keep my muscle mass. <laughs> so, so uh, I mean, why, you don't want to be like the guy. What's the what's the senescence guy who looks like he's gonna fall? Oh over. yeah, they look all the gurus and the yogis. They look so tiny. <laughs> but anyways, I, I don't want to make fun of him because you know they will. He's a brilliant longer. guy. But they yeah. will live longer than me. But uh, you know, anyways. So let's go into um, real quick. Uh, these are the approved indications on the left hand side and the potential ones, meaning the ones that that researchers are looking into right now. Uh, it is approved, the drug is approved for type two diabetes, obviously. Um, actually, there's a, also an indication for obesity for uh, people, especially with the high blood sugar and uh, polycystic um, ovarian uh, syndrome in women, which actually uh, metformin tends to improve the, the symptoms there. On the, on the right-hand side is a potential uh, indications are working even type two diabetes, type one, I'm sorry, cancer, uh, weight, gain uh, related to antipsychotic use. People with uh, schizophrenia, for instance, or even depression are taking medications to control their moods that actually increase body weight. A lot like HIV medications do that too. So it, lots of research on people taking antipsychotics that are taking metformin to to decrease the body weight uh, gain that uh, those drugs uh, cause. Um, some, some work on pancreatic back cell and brain injury, lactation failure. So there's a lot of research going on to try to get this really cheap old drug approved for other uses, right? And obviously when it gets approved for other uses, it'll be expensive for those uses. That's, that's what pharmaceuticals companies do. So, so the fact that we don't have any any data on non-diabetic patients um, made uh, some researchers uh, get together. This actually was funded and created with no pharmaceutical money at all. This was a bunch of researchers that said, we need to study this, it's just a generic, obviously, so we have no pharmaceutical interest when there's not a patent pending. So this is a study that got uh, reviewed by the FDA. They didn't even have to get the, the, the the study reviewed by the FDA, they wanted the FDA blessing. The FDA said, yes, uh, there's gonna be some government funding coming in, but they're also asking rich people to, to fund it. Uh, the targeting aging with metformin studies called the TAME study. And it's 3000 people, uh, they're older, 65 years of age to 79. They're gonna be followed for at least five years and longer. And they're gonna see how these people do on, on the drug. Uh, the, the, the dosage is 850 milligrams twice a day. Um, these are people that have no diabetes, but they may have, uh, don't move it, because <laughs> the there's a primary prevention, meaning um, a slow gait speed, obesity, hypertension, that they may have older, they're older 65 to 79. And they'll follow to see the primary outcome is to see whether they had um, fewer strokes, uh, heart attacks, um, cancers, dementia, et cetera, et cetera. So they'll be able to follow people um, give them a drug and actually not follow them uh, prospectively for five years and see whether the outcome, and it's placebo control too, I think, I forgot to, to look into that, to, yeah, double blinded placebo control study, to see whether the placebo group lives um, or has more problems than the metformin group. So this, this will be interesting, uh, five years from now, we'll, we'll see the data. 
Okay, so let's move on. It takes a large study to prove survival in many cases. But I mean, so, I mean, they are looking at 65 to 79 year old people. We have to put that, you know, that that should be a qualifier. And then, you know, I just want to say, and you know this, Nelson, I mean, I'm the biggest advocate of all time on metformin. I've been using metformin for six years consecutively without ter- coming off. I take a gram AM, a gram PM. It doesn't matter how my diet changes. Even when I'm eating very low carbs and fasting, I still take metformin. I've had no issues. I mean, I get my blood work done two or three times a year. Um, I, I feel that there are other physicians out there, I won't mention their names, but who also have met, made statements that if, if metformin was in the water supply, that a lot of the hospitals would shut down. So, I mean, obviously I'm a staunch advocate. You know, you're a researcher. You know, you've clearly, you know, gone deep down the rabbit hole and pulled up the stuff. And I don't want to stop this because we've got a lot to get to. But I personally believe that metformin should be used by everyone at a certain age. So you take 2,000 milligrams a day? I do. I take AM, PM. Yep. I'm one gram always. I, I have uh, changed my timing to, I used to take it um, an hour before bed, but now I've just, I've started to take it at 6 AM and 12 and 6 PM. I and take it with food. Yeah, I actually, I don't, I don't take it with food. You can you're definitely. And, and there's been times I've taken it too, when I've eaten an apple pie or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel less guilty too, uh, or after tequila, but um, you know, what I'm seeing in the new data that is coming through more and yeah. more studies are following the age 50 twice a day. Right. So the age 50, and I may actually try that the age 50 is, it's, is the most, and as I said, there's some data that shows anything above uh, 1700 may, maybe, you know, not not give any extra benefits. So I think that's where we're going to end up. Day 50 yeah. or you're, you're at 2000, which, you know, I'm sure. Well, the, well, there's a lot of people in the life extension community and there's a lot of step data in there from the, from 30 years of those people. And there's people in there, Nelson, taking three or four grams a day. And they're not having any GI and you got issues. No, no. Good. No. Hey, you know, I may, you may be encouraged. You know, I'm at this point where I'm at, at a thousand, I'm doing okay. Uh, you know, so, uh, I may actually go to 850 at least. Um, let's go through this real quick because some people are terrified. Some people are terrified about Absolutely. this, obviously. Uh, more than 60 years of data on diabetes. So at least we have probably one of the drugs that we have the most safety data, aspirin and metformin. Common side effects, which are GI, um, may, may, some people may have it a few days and then it gets better. I never had them. And I, you know, I know people that you probably didn't have it either, like you said. Um, it's, it's not associated with hypoglycemia. So you're not going to get dizzy or weak. You know, yeah. that's the first fear. Uh, I tried to get one of my um, lady friends that has uh, hyperglycemia to get him. And the first thing she said, oh, I don't want to get, you know, hypoglycemic. It's not, it's not the case. Yep. Anyways, um, um, the lactic acidosis fear that has not shown up at all. Right. The only time it's shown up and it's being rare is with people with severe right. kidney, kidney dysfunction. People are not able to metabolize the drug because their kidneys are not. And there's actually a contraindication for people with what we call EGFR right. of less than 30. Um, so, so obviously that people with uh, bad kidneys and whoever has less than 30, uh, at least in our community, I, I can't even picture that because that really yeah. is severe kidney dysfunction. Well, wasn't there a study, wasn't the data, the original extrapolation from a study of like the late 40s or it might even have been in the early the late 30s or early 40s where it was it was a patient with extreme renal failure who died from metformin and then literally it spread through the medical community yeah. that yeah you were going to get you know lactic acidosis if you used it i mean I, you still hear physicians saying that yeah and the old guyanides were more toxic right they did cause some lactic issues uh but metformin has it so yeah the lactic acidosis stuff and we've you know we've used it in hiv right right, i should tell you something we we the lactic acidosis fear we erased it in hiv hiv really we have more prone we're prone to having more mitochondrial issues than than healthy people and okay. we're going to get to that, too. We're going to get to that, right. too. Uh, yeah, so I, I was very excited, man, when you asked me to do this. I said, you know, I'm going to get into all the papers. Let's scroll down. Okay. Um, and, and I really actually, the more I digged in, the more excited I got. But anyways, this is another really, and why don't you do this slide since you you, you feel so uh, personally. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no problem. I, I will. Yeah. So, so I'll, let me just preface this, that there is a physician who will remain unnamed, a very named physician. Um, along with Dave Asprey, so a lot of you guys watching the show, you know who Dave Asprey is, Bulletproof Coffee and whatnot, who's run with this data that the usage of metformin causes mitochondrial dysfunction. 
And, you know, Nelson's brought up all the data. And again, let's get, make sure that we disclose that this is in rats, okay? So how much this actually, you know, equates to humans is, is to be debated and obviously a question that, you know, is very difficult to, to correlate. But the truth is, is that um, there is an issue um, in vivo and ex vivo, which is muscle oxidative capacity, as it says right there, with diabetic fatty rats in a dose dependent manner. So, but as you can see down here, the equivalent human doses to see this quote unquote issue is really high. Okay, like massively high, like well beyond the level of what any human should be taking or that we know of is taking. So, again, instead of like, you know, listening to this, because they've gone on rants and there's a lot of physicians that have been influenced by them. Um, talking about, again, this mitochondrial dysfunction with metformin. And again, you're, they're extrapolating data, A, on rats, and B, at dosages that are absurd. There's no one using this dose yeah. okay, that we know of. So again, you got to always be careful when you listen to quote-unquote gurus out there talking about how things are bad for you when you don't look at the data or you have an extrapolation, which is clearly what they've done. And I've actually read through all of their work. Cause I wanted to see if there was anything that I could say, well, wow, you know, they have a good point, but 2,400, that's not a lot. I mean, I'm taking, no, and, and actually they didn't show, they didn't see that problem at 2,400. Well, exactly. So, so 8,000 definitely saw it on 24,000. Right. This so were IV, have. this is, yeah. you know, provided IV um, intravenously. <laughs> and uh, the thing is that all these people talking about this problem are using references based on animal data or in vitro. Right. Exactly. They're not using human data. And, you know, as I said, we, we have- But again, to who's going to take 24 grams of metformin in a day? <laughs> I, mean, no I, I mean, so yeah. So, I mean, but I mean, I'm glad that you found this data because it's very important that we push this out there, that there's nothing to fear about mitochondrial dysfunction. There's nothing in the clinical literature that shows that this is a situation other than, as you just said, in rats in super mega dosages. Yeah, and this was published three years ago. So um, right. prior to that, all we had was in vitro. So this is actually not human data, but it's animal data. There's nothing in humans that shows no. uh, mitochondrial dysfunction. But remember too, you said it. This is the most studied drug in the universe. They have 60 years of data on already impaired population groups, right? So why would a healthy, quote unquote, healthy, otherwise healthy person have this kind of risk? I mean, there's no data to, to, to prove it. There just really isn't. Yeah. There's just, you know, and I'm, I tend to be more conservative than you, obviously, and you said, and you actually did did express that. Um, I tend to, because, uh, you know, I don't want to be criticized for pushing something. That but you working. have to be more conservative, too. <laughs> well, I don't know if I have to. But anyways, well, you know, I mean, uh, HIV, gives, HIV, no, HIV gives us a lot more... Um, lead way we we tend to in the hiv world we tend to experiment i mean yeah. we were the ones that pushed the anabolic steroid research the yes, growth hormone yeah. research so we are really early adopters in many ways metformin to be honest with you um some doctors in hiv are saying that every person aging with hiv should be taking metformin right. but many doctors you would be amazed even great doctors in HIV are afraid of hypoglycemia, lactic right, right, acidosis. Right, right. And uh, my next, actually, this is one of the reasons I did this PowerPoint because I'm going to be presenting this in, a, in the HIV world because we also have horrible metabolic uh, issues, me right. visceral fat accumulation, right. hyperglycemia, et cetera. So really are, and we have shown, this is interesting, you're going to get this data. I don't want to digress too much. We, age, we, uh, we have accelerated aging. We compare all the metabolic issues we go through. We have, we are, our aging is 15 years ahead of, of our age compared yep. to healthy controls. Wow. So we're a very good model to do studies on aging because we have an accelerated aging uh, issue. Anyway, so let's move on. Okay, this this good thing. I'm not gonna read all of this because it will give you a, a lot of headaches. This is actually um, uh, a study that was a very well studied and it, it, probably the one with the most interest for our audience. For our group. Yeah, because we, you, know, you, write, you wrote a book about testosterone, I wrote a book about testosterone. Uh, especially you, you're, 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 you're definitely pushing the whole thing. Especially you. <laughs> especially you. Uh, 30 men, these are a very small group, 30 men of, uh, with uh, low testosterone and also impaired glucose tolerance. Um, they, may, they did not have diabetes, but they already were showing um, pre-diabetic uh, symptoms. 12 weeks of metformin, 1.7 grams, which is, you know, about 850 twice a day mm -hmm. is, yep. is repeating itself. Um, two groups, uh, one did uh, nevido or avid, which is testosterone in the canoid. It's a long-acting 
long acting. Oh no, this is the oral. I'm sorry, there are two studies. I'm not sure. No, this is the oral testosterone in the canoe. Canada has it. We the FDA shut it down here. It's a drug that you actually take by mouth, and not like the beetle. Okay, and um, they did you know lipids and inflammatory markers, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and the the testosterone metformin combination um, improved uh, LDL cholesterol inflammatory markers and increased testosterone free testosterone in this the percentage in this group. I, I'm going to show you a graph. Uh, let's go to the next one. A table on the next. Uh, this is what the study did, and and I, I don't want to spend some time because, as I said, this is the most. I would say uh, applicable data for our audience, right? Um, I'll use the word amazing. How's that? No, 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 you know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> as I said, I'm conservative here. <laughs> I'm liberal on many issues, very conservative on, on, on data. Um, so anyways, uh, they did a one-to-one -one, uh, metformin or metformin plus uh, testosterone on the Cano8. At six weeks, they injected, uh, and they were going, this is another study, they, inje they actually used the injection. Six weeks and 18 weeks and 30 weeks, they got an injection of uh, 1,000 uh, milligrams. And, and metformin, another group that just did it metformin. Um, and this is, uh, this is um, these are results, right? Um, age is, you know, they're like 45, uh, the BMI 35, so they're 32, so they're, Overweight, for sure. I mean, yeah. overweight. You probably, you know, the yeah. waist the waist circumference was also um, higher. So these are guys with a little bit of a metabolic metabolic issue. Okay, so that's a, I wanted to show. Let's go into the next one. That's baseline characteristics. Okay, um, so they did see a decrease in 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 systolic blood pressure, um, uh, pulse pressure, even the inflammation of the carotids. Let's move on down there. And um, the free testosterone percentage also um, increased. Uh, let's go down, keep going. Weight um, decreased um, a lot more, a know. lot more on the testosterone um, uh, metformin um, uh, arm and the waist circumference, the, huge, which is what most people want to lose, That's their, belly, their belly size. Yeah, when you see the two, the left hand side is testosterone, the carotid kind of plus metformin, and the right hand side is metformin. Thirty. I mean, that's that's a thousand. That's a thousand percentage increase over the two. Yeah. So 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 as a weight loss um, complementary therapy with testosterone is there's definitely something there. And lipids improved, right. uh, et cetera, et cetera. Inflammation, C peptide inflammation markers improved too. So let's roll down. So that's actually one of those studies that, or two studies, because one was with the oral, another one with the injectable, that showed that metformin and testosterone actually work really synergistically together, actually perform better than each drug alone when it comes to body composition and inflammation and lipids, okay? Um, and this is a, another study, a very probably interesting study for our audience, um, either those using growth hormone or using growth hormone releasing hormones, peptides and things like that. Um, and I found out about this study through my HIV work because we do have growth hormone prescribed to HIV positive people that have uh, uh, HIV wasting. Um, so what, and this is definitely interesting. This surprised me. There are a few things here that don't, that probably don't make as much sense as, as I would have predicted. But the metformin uh, group alone, and you see the, the dark the dark squares are actually the combo, metformin right. plus growth hormone. And then metformin plus placebo um, is a white or empty um, right. triangles. So the BMI weight loss was more uh, pronounced in the in the metformin alone group. Okay, and that may make some sense because IGF-1. Water, uh, yeah, you hold water. Water and even a little more muscle. Right. Um, the, um, the total body fat, um, decrease a little bit more in the first 12 months with the growth hormone metformin, but then it kind of equalized. And the waist circumference also decreased a little bit better in the first six months uh, with the combo. Right. And then it actually got better with the metformin uh, compared to the growth hormone metformin. So um, that was surprising too. Uh, the, the FPG is uh, fasting um, uh, glucose, plasma glucose, 
um, also shows that basically, and growth, this is a most interesting thing because glucose tends to increase with growth hormone, uh, blood sugar. Right. And actually the metformin was able to attenuate that yeah. increase, okay? Yeah. The last graph here is really the most, uh, no, no, don't, don't scroll because the last oh, graph is that, yeah. yeah. The total muscle mass, uh, you can tell metformin alone, and these are, by the way, um, there was no exercise arm in this in this study. <laughs> the metformin alone group actually lost lean, uh, muscle mass. Obviously, the growth hormone metformin group um, it had an increase, obviously, and this is by by um, by DEXA uh, scans. So that's where some people would say, "Ooh, you know, uh, definitely metformin alone." Is it may actually uh, eat away some of your muscle mass. So, but in combination with testosterone, we didn't see that. We actually saw an no right. loss of lean body mass, actually improvement in fat mass, improvement in inflammatory markers. So this is just to show you that metformin can uh, prevent some of the high blood sugar that occurs sometimes with growth hormone. And these were high doses too. These were well, if, I, if I was going to put an educated guess on the reason for the loss of muscle mass, Nelson, it's because obviously they're not on testosterone, they're not weight training, they're eating less. And, and they're eating so much less so that they're actually losing, you know, pounds, muscle and fat. That's what happens. There is there is uh, some indication on appetite. They didn't really report it in this study. Most studies don't, don't follow appetite because appetite really is uh, subjective, you know. Yeah, totally. So, uh, but there may be an effect. The fact that you're lowering insulin and glucose yeah. may, may improve the metabolism of carbohydrates. So, you know, but it makes sense. I'm just saying. Yeah. Glucose. Um, okay, let me rephrase this. Metformin does not seem to decrease the lean body mass gain obtained with growth hormone use as monotherapy. Right. That's actually kind of a, a very good thing to say. And it may actually, uh, there may not be any difference in fat mass loss with the right. two arms. So that's, that's all I want to say here. I don't know what you can walk away from this besides... Um, you know, I was kind of a, a little bit surprised that metformin plus glucose um, growth hormone did not accelerate fat loss right. statistically. So in, in a way, and obviously we we didn't have an exercise intervention here. Maybe with, with exercise, it would be different. But I was shocked. I actually expected metformin to lo lower yeah. fat, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, growth hormone obviously lowers fat by itself. We have good data in HIV, right. not only uh, subcutaneous but visceral fat, and then have a graph that which shows a lot higher, a lot faster loss. Do we, do we know what the dosage of growth hormone was in this? This was high. This was five milligrams uh, a day, which is like 16 IUs. This was high. 16 IUs? Yeah, I know. That's crazy. Yeah. So it was a high dose, you know? So, yeah. you yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, anyways, um, let's keep going on. Yeah. Well, real quick so, question. So, so this is the same study. So it is placebo control, 16 IUs, 850 milligrams oh, twice a day, right there, yeah. 18 Jesus months. Um, and and, and, um, and the, fir the, the first thing you see, and let me just, don't move it around too much because no, I, really, no, I, I know it's a, lot of, it's a lot of data and I apologize, yeah, yeah, but yeah. hey, yeah, screw it. <laughs> yeah, that's the way I, I do things. But the um, aponectin levels is this protein that the fat cells produce, um, to, to control uh, the buildup of fat in the body or, or even metabolism. Um, when it increases, it actually increased um, a lot with metformin and, and growth hormone compared to metformin. Right. And, okay, so that's, that's very important. And the fact is that, um, uh, yeah, let's, let's keep scrolling because I think we're gonna have some more data. So let's keep scrolling. Yeah, when it comes to B12 and IGF-1, and that's another concern that before me may block B12 absorption. Yeah. And there's actually some data that shows that the right hand side, you see a bunch of studies that were listed there. And there's this little graph on the far right hand side. You see little dots on that line, a zero line there. So it, it, it in fact, yes, uh, there was a B12 uh, decreases in B12 blood levels. So if you're taking metformin, definitely sub, uh, supplement with a B12. Yeah, you have absolutely B12. have to. You absolutely yeah. have to. I've seen that when I don't take it, I have a loss. There's, it shows up fast. You have to supplement with B. And my concern on the left-hand side was IGF-1. Uh, to be honest with you, even 
a month ago, I was reading some information that said that metformin may decrease IGF-1. And that's probably why, because I definitely feel more pumped when I'm not on metformin, okay? So I right. said, well, and I did start having to, and I don't know if it's, it's related, a little bit more issues with my shoulder joints. And when I got off metformin for a while, it actually improved. So I'm still, obviously not, I'm still have a strong bias for metformin, but I'm still observing different things that, because yeah. I'm always skeptical about many things. But the IGF-1 in this study with obese uh, patients actually improved hmm. with metformin. Okay, so it actually got better. Um, is that because they lost weight, they lost yeah. fat, whatever, it did not decrease. So this is the only study I could find um, on the effect of metformin and IGF-1. So, so far I haven't seen data that shows that, I, I, that metformin decreases the blood levels of IGF-1. But you see so many, there's so many researchers out there now too in the age and in the quote unquote age management world that talk about, they don't really know whether a decrease in IGF-1 or an increase in IGF-1 is, is, is good or bad. I mean, there's, it's, 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 right, from an, again, from an anti-aging standpoint, we yeah. all know that an increase in IGF-1 from a metabolic and, and anabolic standpoint is great. We want more muscle, yeah. blah, blah, blah. But it's, yeah. it's interesting, you know, th it's very interesting studying IGF-1. Yeah, yeah, some people actually, some anti-aging uh, researchers want IGF-1 to be low because right. there's some data actually links that to survival exactly. and, and or cancers, which is right. not really being proven. Anyways. Um, yeah, this is another combo study. Very, very interesting in, in, and obviously very personal to me. It's a metformin plus or minus exercise, meaning one arm did not exercise, just took metformin. And, and this patient's HIV positive patients with lipodystrophy, lipodystrophy is this, they call it, they used to call it fat redistribution, <laughs> but it's not really fat redistribution. It's an increase of uh, a syndrome that includes increasing visceral fat. So you, you get up this belly, which is even if you have muscle, if you're, right. and we have a decrease in subcutaneous fat, fat under the skin that was basically caused by two drugs that are no longer used. So people would have facial wasting and buttock wasting and leg wasting, the, the, the you know, veiny, no fat there. And then they would have this belly where basically the fat was inside the organ cavity. So that was actually all caused by two different drugs? No, the facial waste inside, the lipoatrophy. There were two drugs in HIV. People really don't know this. ACT and D4T that right. actually burn, killed your fat cells under, your skin, under, the, yeah. under the skin. Killed them for good. So, and for people say, well, that, that's amazing. That's great. Well, how do we get wanna, a hold of that? No, I want to <laughs> take that. I want to take that. <laughs> they, cause, uh, they cause mitochondrial toxicity. They cause neuropathy. They can cause the anemia. I'm joking. Talk about, <laughs> you know, no, no, I get it because I still get that question. I say, go, where, where <laughs> can I take it? So uh, I never got those. I took both drugs. I took, I took, I did take both, both drugs. I don't want to get into that. Anyways, um, so this, these people have uh, weight, uh, increased weight circumference of high fasting um, insulin. They were on 12 weeks for 850 milligrams twice a day. Once again, that 850 shows up everywhere. Uh, exercise three times a week. Very, very strict exercise uh, routine. Um, 11 patients were metformin plus exercise, 14 on the metformin alone. They did CT scans and DEXA. Very, this study was really well done. I mean, HIV, we do really, because we have a lot of uh, people that criticize data in HIV. So the table is going to give you a headache. I just wanted to pinpoint, because this is really the most exciting part for me, particularly, and maybe for anybody that has metabolic issues, is that they did a CT. Imagine this, and I did that myself um, a year ago, and, and insurance companies don't pay for this, but you get into a CT scanner, right? And they do one slice, you know, a one slice CT where right. your belly button is, which is where the L4 vertebra is, L4, L5, yeah, one slice, just to see what's inside your gut, okay? Uh, just to see what visceral, the, the inside the belly, uh, deep belly fat. And the CT scan actually showed that metformin grew, decreased dramatically, decreased VAT, visceral adipose tissue. Right. Uh, it decreased SAT zone, and that's why some uh, researchers in HIV walked away from metformin. Says, well, yes, it decreases the deep belly fat, which is a metabolically uh, damaging fat, but we don't want to decrease the uh, subcutaneous fat anymore because that will cause more facial wasting. <laughs> that was not really. I mean, in this in this times, actually, was that was published two thousand and four. We were using yeah, right. ACT and E4T. Gotcha. So, 
I tr I'm trying to get metformin back into the research world for HIV because we don't have those drugs anymore. Right. So why, you know, you know, have such issues with subcutaneous sure. fat loss. But anyways, so that's why I started metformin. I started metformin because this kind of data. So I just, no, it wasn't. I it was because I just no, beat on you. For no, so I did a CT scan a year ago. <laughs> and I have, I have a lot of visceral fat, even though I'm lean and, and ripped. You know, I, do, I did yeah. have some of that effect from the HIV. So yeah. um, that's, that's the only reason. That's really the only reason. But you've already, like you said, in, in, six, in six months, right? Or six weeks? Did you say six months? Right? You've it's, already noticed the decrease. I've right? lost like um, I lost or lost to half an inch. Um, that's crazy. That's not even important as important to me as the feeling that I'm not bloated. Yeah, exactly. and it, and that uh, yeah, that I can actually wear a shirt with a feeling uncomfortable. Right. That's that awesome. really was, and within a week, within ten days. I started to have, and, and I'm sharing TMI, but hey, this is what we're here for. Right. More regular bowel movements that I hadn't had in years. And that's, that's something awesome. we hear in my world. We, we, we have a lot, 90, 80% to 90% of the immune system is in your gut. Right. And there seems like metformin is doing something there when yes. it comes to inflammation Without and micro microbiome. So, so anyways, let, me, let me just add something. I have a good friend in, in San Francisco who has severe rheumatoid arthritis and He's had his ankles fused and we got him on metformin about almost the same time as you. And he cannot believe really? he's just, he's just blown away that all of his physicians that he's, you know, worked with would never recommend that to him because he's like, my inflammation is so much less now. Like I don't even have issues when I get up out of the, you know, I used to get out of bed and have to sit on the edge of my bed to move my legs for four minutes. And he's yeah. like, I'm, I'm at a point now where I just get up out of bed. Like there's no inhibition, nothing. Wow. Yeah. And you know, after 10 days, the placebo effect wears off. Of so course. people say, well, of course, you know, of course you feel better. You're expected yeah. to feel better. Yeah. Now that wears off around the 10th day. Right. You know? So anyways, let's move on. Um, we're almost there. I mean, actually yeah. this is not being too bad. I hope people are not suffering over yeah, all this. This is great data, man. This is great data. <laughs> That's where I am. Uh, this is actually really cool. Cool, cool. Uh, we posted this on, on my site, excelmail.com, back in maybe six months ago. And even though it's a study, yeah, it's a study that was published last year. Um, also on, on type 2 diabetes patients, right? And you look at the graph. Um, and this is actually do, uh, higher doses. And the doses go from uh, 500 once a day to up to 2,500 milligrams yep. a day. And the PSA in this, in this patient is actually prostatic specific antigen was dramatically low. That's incredible. So there's an inflammation related issue there too. Metformin is working to, to manage uh, or decrease inflammation in the prostate tissue. So, um, so this, is, this is very interesting, man. Yeah. And the more I dig, and believe me, I dig, I read a lot of papers <laughs> to do this work for you, but um, I'm finding, and this is more cool stuff. So, um, and as I said before, um, metformin is, you know, shifting gut bacteria to a friendlier, uh, and this, this special uh, species, Ackermansia, um, tends to, t is, is being associated with better metabolic uh, function. So uh, they're looking at the bugs a lot. I think we're going to see a lot more data on that. Right. Right. And in HIV, we just had um, this year, uh, this was also another reason why I got on the drug in February, um, that showed that metformin reduces the T cell exhaustion. This is what we're finding out in HIV and any immune dysfunction. That CD4 T cells are really the immune cells that um, erect the immune system. And obviously we, the virus kills T cells. So most of us are doing better because the medications work, but our T cells are old. T cells right. are tired and metformin regenerates, wakes them up, actually makes them act again you know, in a, in a younger fashion. So the exhaustion is improved. And this for me, that second thing is, it was, I was blown away because I really have seen the visceral fat data, but not this. And, and also the third one, which is metformin really with exercise. I, I should have said that with exercise reduces the calcium deposits, the plaque right. on, on in HIV uh, positive people. So, you know, I'll be taking this drug till I die. I really right. will because I well, need well, that, well, you know, some days. So well, one other thing too, Nelson, is um, um, 
you know, our good friend, Dr. Brad Osborne, uh, he, he, he provided a lot of studies to me, you know, being a, a neurologist or, a, you know, a surgeon, um, whatever kind of surgery he does, my brain's not working right now. But um, he told me that there's also, it, it also works, it's very neuroprotective because it's doing the same thing with reducing plaque in the synaptic pathways. So there's a lot of gunk that gets into older people's brains. And he says that the metformin is also doing the same thing in that regard. I, I did want to ask you a question about the first bullet point, though. Um, I wonder, because this is fascinating to me, I wonder if it's the increase or the growth of new beneficial gut bacteria that's causing that timeline where people are feeling terrible with the indigestion and the nauseous feelings and the flatulence. I wonder if it's that more than it's actually killing the bad stuff, or do you think it's more of a combination of both? I have no idea. I never had those symptoms, so for me, it's kind right. of alien to even hear that. I yeah, but you're clean. I mean, you're... You, you and I, like you always say, we're not normal. So yeah. if you're looking at a normal person who's probably, you know, a higher BMI, we won't say they're uh -huh. obese, but they're, they got a big gut. They don't train. They don't take care of themselves. They don't eat clean. They eat a lot of shitty food. It would be, it would be interesting to know if it's actually increasing and, de and killing. It, it would be interesting to know. But a lot of those people complain of metformin and they quit. They literally quit after five days. I can't do it. I can't do it. You know? I, t I tell people, this is what I would tell people. Uh, start low. Start low. I mean, yeah, you have to. I started. I started at five hundred. I didn't have a problem. But some people may even want to cut it to two fifty. Cut the pill in half or whatever, twice a day, and then a, a week later go up to five hundred twice a day. And you know, if you really want to do what the studies are showing, go up to a fifty uh, twice a day. Right. But um, you know, I don't. You know, I know a lot of people on metformin. They have not had GI issues or That's nausea good. or, or That's diarrhea. Good. So. Uh, you know, and I, I'll be looking more into this so we can, I can get back to you on the shift that occurs and how long it takes for that shift to occur. So is that related to death of the metabolic right. uh, bacteria or is right. that a shift? So uh, to be honest with you, I haven't done enough research to answer right. that question. Okay. Well, I mean, I, I always tell people that if you can last through it, then that means that you're actually, two things are happening. A, you are cleaning up your diet because it's forcing you to clean up your diet. I mean, literally, if you feel that bad, then hey, yeah, if I really wanna change, I wanna drop body fat, blah, 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 then you're gonna do that. And then like I said too, it definitely do is doing it. There's some sort of an effect on the gut biome that it is cleansing it. So if you can last through it, it will, they do dissipate. Every person I've ever known who stood through it, it, it went away. But I just seen even stick through it. I've never heard that because I've never right. seen anybody suffering through the first week. I no, I've had know. tons of people. Really? They, I mean, I've seen, I mean, obviously I've answered a million questions from people yeah. too. They'll, they'll, they'll be like, how do you deal with this, the nausea? Really? And, and, but it's, and they I, take it with food. I've always taken it with food. They though. take it with food. They're taking it with food. I, honestly, I just think these people's diets are just yeah. garbage. I think if you eat just engineered food three or four times a day, I think, you know, after 10 years, I think you've got yeah. some stuff growing in your stomach. And I tell people, this is not an excuse to, no. for you to eat like no, that. Absolutely okay, no, absolutely not. Don't, don't move on from that. Sorry. Semen, sorry, sorry. semen characteristics, uh, semen quality, um, sperm quality, actually, in one study also improved. Um, <laughs> And, and free testosterone and total testosterone. These were basically not guys on testosterone. These guys, you know, without uh, using testosterone. So <coughs> the more you dig, um, and, and you know, some people may wonder, well, Nelson, you probably found all the positive studies. No, I was actually looking, it really was. I was looking for the negative studies. Because, you know, I mean, somebody actually posted on your group on Facebook, hey guys, don't, you know, I want to hear about the mitochondrial toxicity. I really right. wanted to look at the negative studies. Right. And I couldn't find that. I couldn't find them. So there are some drug drug to drug interactions and these are <coughs> excuse me just make sure that when you start metforming at least google metformin interaction with whatever else you're taking okay because you know in hiv we do have a, a drug that metformin actually increases the blood level of this drug which is a very good drug for hiv but increased blood levels also cause more side effects so uh, just check that i tell people every time you're going to start a new medication just google because actually there, there's good data there metformin interaction with whatever it is right and google that before you put something in your mouth that and 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 the next the next slides are basically self-promoting slides on the clinical it's people. okay you can promote yeah well you know this is actually a company that is geared towards physicians and hopefully a physician will listen to to this uh, talk <laughs> <laughs> but we what I found, uh, I've been working in the field for, I don't know, 30 years. A long time. I found that um, physicians are 
really knowledgeable sometimes on on products that are produced by pharma because pharma companies have uh, pharmaceutical reps that walk in and bring them. No. But compounding pharmacies are making all these products that are not only as good or better, but also cheaper and in different uh, combinations. And doctors don't even know how to prescribe and they don't know how to write a script for a lot of these products and they don't have background information. So I said, you know, I'm going to, we're going to create a company. Nelson, in- doctors know and- everything. Come on, man. No, I mean, doctors are specialists. They specialize. I, I tell you something. I used to I used to criticize doctors a lot. I don't anymore. I don't criticize them at all. I don't know. I don't, Especially I don't know. with the system. You can't criticize them with the system. No, I mean, I tell you, uh, you know, my partner is also a doctor. That makes a, a difference. But uh, they fill out. Uh, they have to fill out all these forms now. It's they terrible, don't have man. any time. It's so, it, bad. They, it's so bad. And there is so much going on that you catching up with new information. It's very hard. So I, and I, I even stopped coaching people. I was coaching people. And yeah. even coaching people, it, that's when I really got humble. It's, it's not an easy thing to do, no, no, update no. it. But it is an easy thing to do is say, I don't know enough about this. I'm sorry. Instead of giving you giving a, a, an opinion on something that you don't know or you have a very strong negative reaction. Right. That's when I'd really get you know, concerned. But anyways, so these are, these are the different, we, we, we also look for uh, help doctors um, get accounts on for lab testing. Um, and we also do marketing for, for doctors and clinics, mostly in the hormone and weight loss uh, field. So, and that's my email for anybody, any doctor interested in the Clinic Optimizers uh, work. You can also go to clinicoptimizers.com. So I'm done. I don't know how long this took. No, it's about, it's not even an hour. So, wow. so real quick, there's, we've got like eight guys still watching live, maybe a little bit more because it's delayed. Um, if you guys have any questions about some of the stuff, you know, please um, type them in there right now and we'll be happy to answer them. Um, Nelson, I got a bunch of questions for you. Um, as you know, we get these questions all the time. It, I think probably the, and this is by the way, going to be addressed in the advanced strategies edition of the book, but I think the number one question that I'm getting from the community nowadays is what's the top, what's the best, you know, what do you and Nelson and guys like you recommend for the, for the, uh, the growth hormone releasing peptides? The, you, know, oh, the man, you, you really want to get into that now? I think we should just answer that right now. Just one question, because we did have a slide in there about growth hormone and, and uh, elevation of IGF-1. Do you think, because I know you were trying, you know, the, 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 the capsule, um, the MK, whatever it was before, but is there anything, yeah, yeah, 677, but, but is there anything out there now besides ipamorelin? And I'm obviously a huge proponent of ipamorelin as a, as a, as a GHRP releasing medication for women more so than men, but is there anything out there that really will ever compare to growth yeah. hormone in your opinion? By the, by the way, I have a PowerPoint just like this one for that subject, but the well, most- then let's, let's save it then, let's do that. The most, the, yeah, the most studied uh, peptide or uh, sec- secretorog uh, is uh, growth hormone releasing peptide two. Right. It's also the strongest when it comes right. to GH output and IGF output. But it just don't you don't you find that it just increases appetite and cortisol? Because it's, so it's a girling, it's a girling and a agonist. So yeah. girling is this uh, uh, hormone that increases IGF one, but is produced by the stomach lining to remind you that you're hungry, that you need to eat. Yeah. So yes, and ibuprofen, which is uh, the MK. M- uh, 677 yeah. uh, peptide also amazing at increasing GH and IGF-1, but it makes uh, somebody really hungry. So the data actually, uh, these are data that were not, none of the studies were have been done on people that exercise. Uh, they have shown that they increase body weight, they increase lean body mass, but they also increase fat mass actually, almost 50-50 in, yeah. in, in the data that I have, obviously. And these are peptides obviously or uh, that, um, some doctors are prescribing in combination to this on Synergy. If you combine, for instance, Sermorelin with uh, GHRP2 and GR, uh, GHRP6. Right. So, but the data is really limited. There's a lot of claims be, being made without any data. The, the one with the most data and the, the, most, um, the most effective increase is really growth hormone releasing peptide 2. Right. But as I said, if some people don't feel hungry, I can't do them. I can't. I eat. I eat forever. It doesn't wear off. Uh, I I get bloated because I I can't. I'm just. It's almost like you eat, but you never satisfied. So I, I myself, I don't use them uh, uh, for obvious reasons. I use you know the pep, you know citrulline and 
and combos like that. I use my metformin, testosterone, HCG. Right. I don't use I don't use anastrozole. I don't believe in that drug. No, we don't. We don't. I we use. Know that. Uh, but you're right. Yeah, you don't believe in HCG. I do. I'm an old. Uh, I've been using testosterone for 28 years. So, uh, I, I mean, I might come back to it. You know that. No, you're I mean, young. You're young. So I really, for me, it's because, um, to be honest with you, it, it really is a boosting of the sexual uh, right. effect. Yeah, that's why I say I'm saving it for when I may need it. Yeah, you way. shouldn't. Nobody should use it when you don't need it, really. Exactly. For me, it's like completely different. I mean, if I. Well, wait a minute. I thought there were tons of LH receptors all over the body. I'm just kidding. That's, there are, but we have. <laughs> We have, once again, you will never hear me say that claim because there are no data. We have no data on HCG. I no, know. We have data on HCG for two things. And the HCG is very important for this, these guys. The guys that want to keep their sperm count Absolutely. up on testosterone because testosterone knocks it down. And the guys really that are really self-conscious about testicular uh, atrophy. Yes, yes. So those are for sure we have totally. enough data. Good, well, well when said. it comes to all the other benefits on uh, upstream hormones and the back, the what do you call somebody says, the back feeling, the bath, the, <laughs> the pathways, we don't have any data on that. We will. Well, actually, and, I, you're right. You're, I, you know I'm singing. You. I, I'm, I preach yeah. through the hymnal. But, but I, I do want to say this just to mention it, um, Dr. Merrill Matchkey, which I have to introduce you to him. He is a physician. Um, he's about my age, two years older, I think. He's a urologist, board certified guy in Chicago. Amazing guy. Amazing. Did a podcast with him. He is like one of the top fertility specialists in the uh, place that he's in in Chicago. And it's probably the number one fertility place in the Midwest. And he is actually now writing um, a like a sub chapter on fertility through optimization for the advanced strategies edition. And I'm so excited to see what he is because this guy is brilliant and he is going to provide like literally the latest and greatest of what men should do, you know, in their thirties, forties and fifties to maintain fertility and also stay on testosterone where there's a clinical need. So it's going to be amazing. I mean, I'm telling you, this guy is brilliant. I got to introduce you to him. Actually, yeah. you'll meet him. You're going to be at AMG in Tucson, correct? Yeah. And okay, Vegas, cool. So yeah. I'll introduce you to him. He's so, a good guy. And by the way, I also have a PowerPoint longer than this one on HCG. Now that, you know, with Clinic Optimizers, what I've done is really made me sit down and put and put all the scientific data on every topic together. So I have a PowerPoint on HCG. And all okay, so we got one night. question. So, so you and I definitely then will do this, as we said a long time ago, we'll start doing these once a month, but we'll definitely do... GH, GHRP, IGF, and then we'll do HCG too. But um, so good question. We didn't address this, but it's a good question is, um, was there any reference to berberin, which is touted as a metformin alternative? Did you want to take that? Because I have a lot on that. No, you should. I mean, it really, it, you know, there's some good data on that. I would rather take the real drug. It's cheap. and Exactly. Exactly. Uh, you know, uh, supplements are not regulated. And, exactly. Uh, you know, so. Uh, You're stealing why, my thunder. I'm sorry. So why try something that may or may not have the active ingredient? You know, it's just. Anyways, and a lot of that supplement actually has Chinese metformin in it. So. <laughs> okay. So, so, so he, he just, just, thank you. He stole my thunder. So, so I actually just interviewed Sean Wells in a podcast that was on this week on TRTRevolution.com. Please go listen to it. It's brilliant. Sean is known as you know the world's greatest formulator he has multiple patents on god knows how many different supplements he's a brilliant mind um in the performance uh, realm and he said this is exact quote and nelson again stole my thunder but he said i've tested every single manufacturer of berberin and i won't name anybody out he said but there's like three different manufacturers that even produce a brand that's at 70 percent of label claims so when you understand that then Nelson just hit the head, hit it right out of the park. Metformin is cheaper. It's easier to get. Don't come at us and say, my doctor won't write a prescription. Buy it online. It's everywhere. There's a million different online pharmacies that'll sell it to you. You're not going to get arrested by having it come to your house. Um, but that's, that's the truth. And there, you know, there are physicians that will prescribe it. I mean, you just have to, as we always say, if your doctor won't, you know, get it or, or write it for you, find another doctor. Or, or have him email me so I can send him a PowerPoint. <laughs> yeah, like that's going to matter. Is he a physician? No, 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 no. But they, the doctors respond to data. I know they do. I know they do. Anyways. I mean, you got, a lot of these people in their mind, there's like, you know, I got to find another doctor. Okay, so the more questions are coming in, there probably is a delay. Um, Nelson, you've been on testosterone for tw how many years? Did you say 30? 27, 28. Okay, so, so 28 years. Good, good listener, Keith Jones. Um, how long have you been on HCG? I wrote the book uh, seven years ago. Yeah, six, seven years. 
And uh, I saw a big difference and I still do. You know, and the main question I get with HCE, does it wear off? Do you become resistant? Um, no, actually I use it twice a, twice a week. I don't I, think you do either. 500 I use. Um, and I travel, so sometimes I, I'm lazy and say, I don't want to bring, you know, you have to keep it refrigerated too, or in a little cooler that I have. And uh, when I don't use it, definitely my sex, it's sex. It's, for me, it's all about sex drive and testicular size. I, I, <laughs> there's a new normal after so many years of testosterone where you don't remember how your testicles used to look. <laughs> so for me, uh, that changed with HCG and also, I'm not obviously looking to have a kid, so obviously, and right. I'm 58, so fertility is not an issue. But the sex drive is definitely a big difference. When I don't use it for a week or two, it's like I have no, it doesn't even cross my mind to to have sex. Well, like really, I said, I mean, I'm saving it, Nelson. When Monica gets old to me. Yeah, you know, I'm 58 <laughs> and I'm having a round of an old, you know. But uh, yeah, for me, it's, you know, for a younger guy, maybe not, you know, but if you want to have kids, yeah, because the uh, Lipschultz uh, Baylor here in Houston did a small but really convincing study that this were guys were on testosterone alone, gels and injections for a while and their sperm count was like, you know, had decreased dramatically. And he put him on HCG. His protocol was a little different. 500 I used three times a, a week, every other day. And I uh, retested them a, f a few weeks later for sperm quality and count. And all of them, most of them had gone up. Most of them, most of them. Uh, the ones that had been on testosterone for a long time and or were very older tended to have a, a less of a response when it comes to sperm. Quality. So that in itself is shifting the interest of HCG combined with testosterone. Right. So, anyways, we'll do an a, a HCG. Uh, yeah, that'll be epic. I do want to say that about HCG, just so people get the right understanding. HCG does the same thing for me that it does for Ellison. I have a, a you know a doper, a little bit of a dopamine response. I feel better. I definitely have a sexual um, functional or you know an increase, but like an I edge. just I get acne. It causes uh, yeah, the, acne. The HD. Yeah, the HD. It, it just causes acne when I use it. And then I just, and then I also feel a little bit imbalanced yeah. a couple days later because obviously we know that, we know the reason for that. So I just don't use it. Again, I'm not having kids. Yeah. You're 100% right. You yeah. have to use it if you want to maintain and, and some guys really are not, uh, they don't do well. They get water retention. And, I don't have that, but I just get acne. It happens immediately. It's within 48 hours I have acne on my shoulder. Because you're a young kid. That's why you're so good. At your DHT is very high. Oh, right yeah. Kids, go play basketball. And don't go on yeah. people again. A um, couple more questions, and then we'll drop. We'll shut it down. Um, um, Al Kaizi, what's up, Al? He says, uh, would a keto diet offer the same benefits as metformin? I'm going to let you have that one. Okay. Um, so it's a good question. Here's what I say about ketogenic diets. And again, Sean Wells is a big ketogenic guy. He's helped write books on ketogenic diets. I did research with, a lot of you guys know this, I did research with Lyle McDonald a long time ago. You know, Lyle wrote an amazing book. Lyle's absolutely crazy at this point in his life, but um, he wrote a great book. Ketogenic diets are 90% of the time not followed. And what I mean by that is, is in order to do a true ketogenic diet, you have to only eat 20% protein. Okay, and the rest is fat. 95%, it's probably higher, of people who think they're in ketogenic diets are eating all this protein and fat, and the protein is being converted through a process called gluconeogenesis to glucose, so you're not in ketosis, hence you're not on a ketogenic diet, so it doesn't even matter. So the real answer is, unless you're on a real ketogenic diet and you're on 20% protein, which is, again, very difficult to do, um, then I would say that metformin will definitely offer a stronger benefit from an insulin signal suppression standpoint. However, if you are on a ketogenic diet, there's no, there's no need to be using a real ketogenic diet. There's no need to be using metformin at all because your insulin signal is already nominal, if that makes sense. Um, one other question, and this is for you for sure. Will HCG be more effective um, for both primary and secondary hypogonadism, or would it be a simplest way to test which form a person has? It would be a simple way to test what per, which one person has, because you know, uh, yeah, yeah. If you respond well, you know, your late cells and your and your testicles are still working properly. So, yeah, that's a good way to test it. Um, and wh why are we getting all these questions about 
you know, HCG, we're talking about metformin. And I, I thought we're going to bring, we bring it up. They're, see, they're not interested on in metformin. No, they are. A lot of these guys are. I think that most of them, in my opinion, most of them are using that now. I think the biggest issue with them is still, still acquisition. You know, some of the biggest online pharmacies for it have back, back orders on it. You yeah, know, so you know, a lot of people. Know, it, India makes 700 tons a year of this drug that really costs, right. even in the United States. I mean, you can buy metformin by prescription in the United States for less than $5 um, for, for 500 million. Here, here's a great question. Hey, John, what's up, brother? John Corticelli asked you, Nelson, do you take any other supplements um, besides B12 with metformin? Yeah, yeah. I take uh, Coenzyme Q10, high yeah. doses. I take actually 600 milligrams. Uh, yeah. That's for cardiovascular. And, yeah. you know, in my world, uh, we have a 30% increase uh, cardiovascular uh, risk. Um, I take uh, NAC, NACL cysteine, because of not only because of liver protection, glutathione uh, enhancement. Um, and really, NAC is like for me, I have enough data to say, okay. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I take carnitine, even though some people poo poo carnitine. At, uh, I take at 3,000 milligrams a, a day, too. I've been taking carnitine since. Are you taking L or I, acetyl? Acetyl, acetyl or L? Acetyl. Yeah. Since yeah. I found out, I mean, probably taking it 25 years. And I really feel an energy difference. I mental and, and by the way, I've also been taking it since I was 28 years old. And I've actually taken acetyl L carnitine up to 12 grams a day. Yeah, I mean, my mental and energy and also my lipids. I've never had LDL problems or yeah, cholesterol, even though I'm taking medications that cause that. What else? Uh, B100 formula at night, just B, B vitamins, about 100 milligrams of each. Uh, I'm looking at, I have a pill box. My pill box is huge. I'm, I'm trying to <laughs> picture, picture it in my mind. Uh, uh, vitamin D, very important, 5,000. Yeah, absolutely. It's a daily because of bone. Uh, we have bone issues in HIV too. Uh, and also metabolically. Are you but, taking, you, I, I, we've talked about this before. Are you taking turmeric? No, 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 no. It's very hard to find the you can't one that's to digest absor it, right? absorbable. Yeah, the GI issues. Yeah. No. Not at all. I mean, yes, I've seen the data on inflammation and all that, but no. Um, yeah, the smell, no. Uh, <laughs> uh, forget what else I'm taking. I'm, I'm not really a huge supplement guy. I, I really right, right. ask you. Uh, I do, uh, and I tell guys, go to examine.com. Those guys yep. are amazing. They have all the data there on all Yeah, it is a great place. And I go to consumer reports. Um, or org or two and, and look at the, the the testing they do on different companies and uh yeah i that's about it i don't think uh, maybe something else i'm forgetting that i take on and off uh for fatigue my issue is basically low energy right. sometimes because i i do so i do have some mitochondrial issues left over from my past exposure to toxic drugs but anyways yes oh, so so guys um last last going la going once going twice if you have any more questions please type them in otherwise we're going to shut it down we truly appreciate you guys watching today i thought this was an epic conversation i mean in my opinion we pretty much dispelled the um you know anything that was out there was outstanding around metformin being a uh, you know toxic or, or or risk averse i mean i i don't believe as as nelson's evidence you know that, that was a very uh, evidence-based lecture and I don't see any risks um, with metformin unless you have um, you know some sort of renal impairment um, or as Nelson said you have you're taking one of those drugs that there may be a contraindication with metformin but it's it's there's very few that, all, that have one at least that are known so at the same time I want to be clear do we say that everybody should be a metformin I wouldn't say that you do but that's fine with you and I completely get it obviously right. Look at the data just presented. Obviously, it right. looks like I'm biased, but I'm not. This is a, I try really try hard to find really negative data because you know it's always good to have a balance. Absolutely. Um, but uh, for younger guys that are lean or um, you know for survive for for mortality uh, issues and uh, survival expansion of life expansion life lifespan. In, uh, I don't know, you know. I don't think anyone under 30 should be on it. But, yeah, I mean, I, you know. I, but I think if you're fat, I think if you're fat and your goal is to optimize in your 30s and, and get yourself on the right track, I think it helps. I think I think you're, I think you said it best. I think you said start low, go slow. 250 to 500 and see what, how your, how your uh, gut biome reacts. And, um, and then over time, obviously get your blood work done. I mean, we didn't even talk about, you know, H1, you know, A1C levels and blood fasting, blood glucose and stuff. There was one thing I saw in one of your studies where it did show with the, it was, I think it was the growth hormone and metformin. It did show a suppression or a reduction 
in uh, in A one C, which is obviously always good. But um, I mean, again, that's that's just my opinion. I mean, obviously, you agree for people that are um, that that have uh, issues, uh, physical issues or health issues, that you know, if they want to expend lifespan, there's no question that metformin improves that or can. Or can. Or cancer, you know, definitely it is, the cancer data is really strong. So. Yeah, yeah, and 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 uh, what's his name um, talks about that in, in Tim Ferriss's book and Tools of Titans. Um, uh, Dom Diagostino, he talks about using metformin for cancer too. So again, if you guys, if you have cancer, you know somebody that does. That's a book that you should definitely read because there's some really good high level information about um, dealing with cancer, especially end stage and middle stage. So again, guys, thank you so much for coming today. We're going to shut it down, but uh, we will do, Nelson and I will reconvene and we'll do another couple in the, in the very near future. All right. Thanks a lot, Jay. Bye, everybody.